Right, more on uh, President Obama and the American banks and all the rest of the business news with Dominic. Hello there. Hello, Chris. Thank you very much indeed. His message is, I'm going to get your money back, that's President Obama's views, to taxpayers this evening. Banks face billions of dollars in levies over the next decade to pay back the government assistance during the financial crisis. Well, investment banks are one, of course, but value retail chains have been another of the success stories of this recession. Today, Primark said sales were up yet again. But there's a distinct lack of Christmas cheer at Waterstones. Its sales figures don't make happy reading. Neither do Argos's share slide as performance disappoints. Well, some of the world's biggest banks will have to hand over billions of dollars of extra tax for the next decade under plans announced today by President Obama. Banks and other financial institutions with assets worth $50 billion or more will have to pay a 0.15% charge on their value. It could raise $90 billion over the next 10 years. President Obama says the aim is to get back taxpayers' money. My commitment is to the taxpayer. My commitment is to recover every single dime the American people are owed. And my determination to achieve this goal is only heightened when I see reports of massive profits and obscene bonuses at some of the very firms who owe their continued existence to the American people. Folks who have not been made whole and who continue to face real hardship in this recession. We want our money back and we're going to get it. Well, let's have a little look at the markets, how they reacted. Uh, the Royal Bank of Scotland Barclays shares actually up, so they're not obviously, investors not too worried about the plans, the FTSE 100 up as well, and also looking at the US bank shares as well, some of the big ones as well trading up today, so not a huge amount of concern. Uh, with us to talk about this is Chris Roebuck from the CAS, CAS Business School. Chris, thank you very much you for mean. coming in. Um, legislators, politicians in London mm -hmm. uh, will be sighing a huge sigh of relief, won't they, because there was a sense that London and, and Paris yeah. were, were, were the only ones really going after the bankers and that the US had let them off, so they'll be happy. I'm absolutely sure they'll be happy. Let's face it, this does let London off the hook to a degree. And those international banks that were seriously considering moving from London, uh, particularly over to uh, the States, will be thinking again. Um, it's quite clever, this, isn't it, this, this US move? Because it recoups money for the taxpayer, the US taxpayer. We heard up to maybe 90 billion, perhaps even more. Mm -hmm. But what it also does is it rewards banks that have a lot of deposits and it penalizes those that are, that are using the wholesale markets, what we've heard to be called the casino markets, Indeed. to get their funding. So it's, are, you, are you impressed by what they've done? Yes, I think uh, Obama ha has been quite clever in the way he's structured it. There are two key issues that we have to address in terms of this particular situation. One, the bankers and their bonuses. And secondly, getting stability back into the global financial markets. If you look at what uh, Gordon Brown has done and Sarkozy has done, that addresses to a degree the bonus issue, but it doesn't touch on the issue about getting stability back into the markets. And Obama's been quite clever here because he's managed to capture both. Um, what do you think the reaction will be uh, in, in US banking circles? This, this puts a penalty on them for many, many years. It's a known penalty, admittedly, uh, which is often a, a, a popular in the world of business. But it will certainly make them, it will certainly, will it put pressure on them to deliver results or will they still be able to make a profit, do you think? They'll certainly still be able to make a profit, I think, because the level of profit that, there's may, that they are making suggests that, that there is enough margin there to still make profit in most of the business they're doing. The whole issue about banks is that banks don't respond to politics, they respond to economics. And the interesting thing here is that he's pulling the economic lever more than the political lever from the perspective of the banks, but he's pulling the political lever from the perspective of the American public, which is very clever. This is all coming against a, against a backdrop, isn't it, of banks finding it harder to make money. There are, it's not, it's, 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 it's not just there, they'll have to have more savings in order yeah. to lend. We're also hearing from you know, global regulators that they're going to have to have more money as capital if they want to lend as well. Will this affect their ability to lend in the future? Will there be many people around the world who can get mortgages, uh, personal loans now that perhaps won't in the future because of these tighter restrictions on banks? It's certainly fair to say that one of the things that isn't being picked up a lot by the media is what's being proposed by the Basel Committee on, on Banking. And that's effectively the G20 plus seven other major financial players. And what they are saying 
is that in the future, if this agreement goes through, banks will have to hold significantly more capital against the risk. The capital will have to be liquid capital that they can get their hands on. And that for the products that are more risky, the level of capital they will have to hold will be really significantly higher to balance the risk. Now that's going to put up the price of the money. And that means the money is going to be more difficult to get and it's going to be at a higher price for everybody. Chris Roebuck from Cass Business School, thank you very much for thank joining you. us. Some